In this video, we are going to talk about conversions um, and why we need to convert. So, what are we even talking about conversions? We're talking about converting a number from uh, one unit of measure to a different level of that same unit of measure. Um, I'm not talking about converting from one measurement to another, if that makes sense. Um, we're not converting uh, miles an hour to kilometers an hour. In this case, we're going to be talking about measurements and we're going to be talking about those little pieces in front of words like kilo and milli and mega and micro because when you are diagnosing a vehicle using a meter, then you might think you have an acceptable reading or an unacceptable reading and you might be incorrect because you are assuming the nature of the measurement um, such as right here I've got A for amps, right? So let me just dive right in and explain what it is uh, and how it is that we're, we're going to do this. So what I have is this handy dandy little chart here. I like to draw it because it helps me remember. Um, and I think that uh, for everybody else out there, just draw it until it comes second nature to you. I don't usually when I'm thinking of uh, how to convert something, this, this chart automatically comes up in my head. And I learned this a long time ago in a chemistry class and it just stuck with me and I kind of thought it was funny because um, the, my instructor at the time didn't call it an STD chart, but I call it the STD chart because it's funny. Um, STD in this case does not stand for anything else besides standard. Um, and when we're talking about this chart at all, my STD chart is going to help you convert easily. As long as you plug in your number, it's, it's pretty much as long as you know which direction you need to go, it, it takes you there. So um, in this chart here, in my STD chart, we've got our standard unit of measure. Now this can go for whatever you are doing. So in this case today, we are doing volts, amps, and ohms because we are measuring electrical circuits with the meter. But let's say you're talking weight something like grams, what about kilograms or milligrams, uh, the same exact principle would apply. So it's a nice handy chart that you can use um, all around in life. So looking at this chart here, always in the center we start at our standard. That's why we call it the STD chart. So standard meaning simply just volts. No word in front like kilo or milli, just plain old volts. Uh, a, just amps, and ohms, just ohms. So that is our standard unit of measure. Um, same would apply if you were measuring something else like grams, right? That would be in the middle. That's your standard. Now when we start to change our decimal point because of uh, how either big or small the number is, so we may go to the right with our decimal point for milli. Um, and these terms are, say, if I'm, I'm going to write up a number here, if I have 5 millivolts, why not just say it in what volts is? Why do I even need kil kilo or milli? Because of what the number starts to look like, and sometimes it's a little bit easier or faster to read if we're using terms like milli or kilo, especially when we're dealing with very, very tiny numbers and very, very large um, numbers. So... Right here, I've got an example of 0.25 kiloamps. That sounds like a really, really tiny number. Um, I didn't mention it too much in my previous videos uh, for last week, but um, when you get electrocuted and, and people get hurt or die, it's not really the voltage that kills them. Uh, yeah, sure, that pressure can hurt, but, I mean, you can get whacked with a 60,000 volt ignition system and not die. You might pee your pants a little bit, but that'll be the worst thing that happens unless somebody sees it. So when you get whacked with a voltage, the pressure, that snap will hurt. But when people actually die or get hurt, it's because of a high amount of amperage. Now, when I have... Um, even a little bit of amperage, if I've got a lot of voltage to push it, then it's easier to kill you. The lower the voltage, the, the more amperage it's going to take to kill you, but it really doesn't take a whole lot. 
Um, it takes less than one amp really to kill you if you have a decent voltage behind it. So nothing on your car is, um, unless it's a hybrid or a full electric vehicle or fuel cell, um, it's not gonna kill you. You know, people get afraid of the batteries or ignition systems, no matter what, it's, you're, not, you're not gonna get um, significantly hurt. Like I said, you might, you might get a, a pinch, but it's, it's nothing significant. If you're driving, or I'm sorry, working on a hybrid vehicle or an electric vehicle, the reason why they're so dangerous is because not only do they have a lot of amperage flowing, because um, anytime you're dealing with a really high mechanical resistance, you're dealing with a lot of amperage. And so not high electrical resistance, high mechanical resistance. Um, so something like moving the car using an electric motor, that's, that's a lot of work. And so we're going to get a lot of wattage, which means uh, lots of amperage. Now, because we have so much amperage and a bunch of voltage, instead of, you know, if we had 12 volts pushing that amperage, it wouldn't be as bad. But if we have 240 volts in a hybrid system or a full electric system, that is pushing that same large amount of amperage, that's when it starts to become deadly. And so um, it's important to know these conversions, I'm sort of making my way back here um, to conversions, went a little off track, but the reason why is because if we look at a number like 0.25 kiloamps, it doesn't seem significant. You see something like that on a meter and that's not realistic because you're not gonna be amp testing that. But just as an example, you see something on the meter and you think it's not that big of a deal. It really is um, because like I said, it takes, first off, it takes less than an amp to kill you. Well, that's less than one, but that says kiloamps. So how many amps is that? And that's what we're here to talk about today. And that's what the SCB chart is here to help you with. So let's take a look at this number here. Um, we wanna know how many amps 0.25 kiloamps is. Here's how you sort of uh, plug this into the chart. Always go by where the decimal point is. If you have no decimal point, let's say the number is just 25, um, then assume the decimal points at the end, just like you would in a regular math class, right? And go from there. Now we're gonna take that decimal point. So first thing, decimal point, where is it at? And then second thing, do I have any word um, or sort of letter in front of my standard unit of measure? So if my unit of measure is amps, but I've got a K in front of it, I know that's kiloamps. So that tells me my starting point on this chart is right here because that's where I'm starting. I'm starting at kilo. Now, the third thing I need to do is figure out where I want to go. So if I'm looking here and I'm starting at kilo and I want to know how much standard amps there is, then this is my end point. So I know that my decimal point starts here and it needs to end here. So all I need to do is just count. One, two, three. So our decimal point is going to move in order to get from kilo to standard, three places to the right. So I would take that decimal point and move it three places to the right. So there would have to be a zero added in there. So we're looking at 250 and the decimal points now here, amps that all of a sudden becomes a really big number. 250 amps will mess you up. So it's really important to know the difference between 0.25 kiloamps and 250 kiloamps because there really is no difference except for the number on your meter or the number on a paper. And um, so it's really, really, really important to know these conversions. Uh, there will be questions in this week's module about conversions and you'll have to figure out a couple, but hopefully it's not too tough. Now, obviously, um, this can go in any direction. So if my decimal point, let's say we started with milli, right? Let's say we started at, um, instead of kiloamps, maybe we started at milliamps instead. And uh, we said that, um, let's say we had 250 milliamps and we want to know how many amps that is. We take our decimal point, I don't have one, so I put mine at the end, right? I look at the, the letter in front of my standard unit, which is milli, so I know that this now has become my starting point. Get rid of this number here. 
This now has become my starting point, and again, we're going back to standard, so this is my end point. So in this case, we're going to go three places to the left. So I'm gonna take my decimal point, and I'm gonna move one, two, three. The decimal point, again, we kinda of just started with the, the last number, or, or it's the same number that we started with last. Now we're looking back at 0.25 amps. That's not very much amperage at all, right? So um, that is how you use this chart. Now, what you can uh, often forget is what order, what side is what, you know? So unless some of you guys come up with something better, and believe me, I am all ears because um, I have thought about this for a long time, and nothing has really come up. I always remember that Kelly stayed mad. If I remember Kelly stayed mad, then I know what side the K goes on and what side the little M goes on. So uh, that's how you utilize this STD charts. Um, now, for those of you who are wondering what about mega or micro, What's nice is everything is simply by like thousandths. So we just always, first off, you can just always remember decimal point always moves only three places. Whatever direction you're going, it's only three places. So if I wanted to know what the number was in mega, then I would take my decimal point and move it six places. I don't have enough space on my board. I'd have to make this much smaller. So I would go three places past kilo. So a total of six places from standard um, because kilo would be really referring to thousands while mega is really referring to millions. So if we're looking at um, from standard to milli, it's three decimal points to the right, right? If I wanted to go even further, a, a smaller unit would be micro. So if I wanted to know how many micro amps it was from standard, I would go six places to the right. Um, so I'd go three to milli and then an additional three to micro. So on your meter, the kilo or the K, uh, milli is an M in front, a little M in front of the number. If it was mega, it, we would be looking at a big capital M in front of whatever unit of measure volts, amps, or ohms. And then um, micro is really weird because it's almost like this little U-y looking shape. Um, so it's almost like a cursive U and it's got like one side's a little bit of a longer tail there. Um, but that's micro and your uh, meter will have a symbol rather than the little M so you don't get confused which one's which. That is conversions in a nutshell and how you would convert from kilo to milli to mega to micro back to standard. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.